Personnel selected, Dave, Toy Restoration Expert and YouTuber. Channel code name, Toy Poloi. Welcome to Toy Poloi. Hello and welcome to another video from Toy Ploy. In today's video we're going to be fixing up this vintage Kenner mask Thunderhawk. Now this I recently purchased off eBay. I got the car as one lot and I already had the figures and I was hoping that when the car arrived that it would be as damaged as it looked in the photos but actually it's turned up and it's not too bad. It still needs a few bits fixing on it which is what we will be doing today but I'm going to be coming back to this project in a second video because I've now bought myself a really beaten up Thunderhawk because there's some very interesting things I want to cover in a few video so for today's video we'll get this one working and looking really nice and I've also got a reproduction box to put it in so that I can get it on display but first up let's take a look at what's actually wrong with this Thunderhawk and then we'll get on with fixing it this Thunderhawk cost me about 25 pounds I bought it off eBay thinking that it was uh, slightly more broken than it is but it's turned up and really it's not in too bad condition I know it looks quite scruffy but actually most of that is just dirt and it should be very easy to fix it does have a few issues that we will need to deal with some are simple like the stickers are missing you can see there should be some stickers on the top and this one at the back has been damaged and removed so I'm going to make myself some uh, replacement stickers I will redesign these from scratch so that they look as good as new the mechanism here when you press this button these uh, wings should open up that doesn't seem to work but I can see immediately what's wrong with that that should be straightforward to fix also this tail fin when you push it down it does clip in place but not really properly you can see it raises up quite a long way so I think there's something up with that because it should really sort of clip quite far down so you can't see these jets and also the mask emblem yeah so something's definitely up with that so we'll try and fix that we've got to remove all of this residue we've got to give everything a good clean if we turn it over you can see that it is missing the bomb so we need to sort those out there's a little bit of rust on this axle here so i want to get that removed and try and tidy that up generally though we've just got to give the whole thing a good clean to start with and um, then we can sort of get to work on making it look really nice i also happen to have a uh, matt tracker in my collection already i got these two figures and i thought they were complete or i thought one of them was complete at least but when I came to look at it you can see here that the mask has been cut down someone has cut big chunks of that off so um, I've actually just gone and grabbed another one off eBay which I'm waiting to arrive so hopefully that will arrive soon then we can have a complete map tracker but the first thing I want to do is to uh, clean off this residue here before I clean the rest of it because then I can give it a good clean with some hot soapy water I want to remove this sort of old sticker residue it looks like someone's had a good scratch at it even maybe with a screwdriver or something but I think we can clean that off and make it look a whole lot better before we clean everything else and uh, put some new stickers on it so let's do that now to remove this I've shown it many times before the first thing I will use is lighter fluid this is just normal lighter fluid you can pick it up at most sort of news agents and this is very good at dissolving the glue that's used on these old stickers this is petrol based and mostly the glues that's used on these will be petrol based as well so this will dissolve that quite nicely all you need to do is liberally put this onto the old sticker residue let it soak in for a bit and I've got a bit of a kitchen cloth here I should be able to rub away and you can see straight away it starts to come off it dissolves the glue that quickly and it doesn't damage the plastic underneath this though is really quite dirty you can see actually how dirty it is there on the uh, bit of cloth but I reckon we'll be able to remove all of that quite nicely it's a shame someone's gone at this with I'm going to say that must be a screwdriver or something you see there's deep scratches in there it shouldn't matter because we will be covering this over with a new sticker but it's a shame that someone's gone that sort of hard at it to, to try and remove the old sticker they didn't need to if they'd known this trick So that immediately looks better you can see that's removed the sticker residue really quite nicely uh, as i say it's a shame that someone scratched that up but we will be putting a new sticker over the top of that so it really was not going to make a great deal of difference in the end now for the rest of this i do want to give it a bit of a clean it's quite dusty there's lots of dirt and grime you can see sort of underneath the things and really it's just a bit sort of grimy so i'm going to take this downstairs and use a uh, hot soapy water and a toothbrush to gently sort of brush it off i will not be submerging this in water because there are metal parts in it there's metal axles and springs and screws so i'm just going to be using the toothbrush sort of on the surface i also don't want to damage these stickers although i'm going to be making new stickers it'd be nice if we kept some of the ones that are on here originally so i will try and avoid those you can see some are starting to come away but we can easily stick those back down so yeah i'm just going to be quite careful as i go and 
and clean this. Let's make it look as tidy and neat as can be and give everything a good clean. After a clean it's already looking a lot better. The stickers are a little bit damp around the edges so I'm just going to let those dry off. But while they're drying we can start to have a go at removing some of this rust that's on this front axle. Now I've shown these before on my channel. These are contact cleaners. So these are sort of glass fibre strands inside this sort of pen-like tool and they're used for cleaning uh, these sort of contacts on, well yeah, just all electronic equipment really. It's a very useful uh, tool to have. Uh, if you want to uh, get one of these then check out the tool shop on toyploy.com. I list all of the equipment that I use on there. The idea is you just rub it over the surface where the rust is and the sort of slight abrasive nature of these glass fibre strands takes away the rust. And on this I can see it's actually quite sort of thick rust so I'm going to try this for a bit and then I'm going to put some vinegar on it which should dissolve the rest of it. So um, I'll just give this a little scrub down and see how much I can get off and then we'll add some vinegar just to uh, get the last bits of rust off and then it should look quite nice. So that's definitely looking better. You can see there's less rust on there. There's still some areas that have quite a large amount of rust on. I will do a little bit more of this on here just to see if I can get rid of the last bits. But rust is an awkward one to get rid of and that's why I say I'm going to use vinegar. Vinegar will dissolve rust. So what I'm going to do once this is done, I'm just going to stick a little bit of tissue over this and then pour some vinegar on. So the vinegar has time to sort of sit and work its magic. You leave it for a few hours and I should be able to wash that off. Yeah, it's certainly better. In fact, what I'm going to do is I've got a paintbrush here. I should just use that to uh, brush away. Oh yeah, that's definitely looking better. You can see there's a lot less rust on there. This rust is just on the surface now because it's a little bit damp, but I can brush that away just with a tissue. Yeah, that's not looking bad at all. So the next stage, as I say, is I'm going to get a small amount of this tissue here. Just it doesn't need to be a huge amount because you want to put this on so that the uh, vinegar has something to sort of hold on to. If you don't do this, the vinegar is just going to pour straight inside the car. So what we've got to do is if we just push that on there, like so. And then this is just some white vinegar that I happen to have in a pot. You can buy this in um, most supermarkets actually sell white vinegar, but if not, DIY shops will sell it as well. And I'm going to put a bit of this white vinegar onto this tissue. Like so, just soak it in. I'm just going to push that down onto the axle there and then I'll leave it for a little while and it should dissolve the rust quite nicely. I might need to turn the axle every once in a while because it's sort of rusty all the way around but I think that should get rid of those last little remnants of rust quite easily. And there we go, 10 minutes later you can see I've now got all of that rust removed and it's looking a lot better. The axle's never going to be as shiny as the original axle would have been but it certainly doesn't look rusty now and that's uh, really what I was going for. It's now time to take this apart and see if I can work out what's going on with this rear fin. Uh, the wing parts or the doors, I can exa see exactly what's going on. There's a spring there that's just become unclipped. You can just about see it. It just needs clipping back behind that post. So I could do that now. In fact, there you go. I can just done it with my finger. It's that easy to do. So those uh, wings are now working. But what I really want to do is see why this doesn't seem to sort of clip down far enough. You can see it should really clip down a bit further. So um, yeah, the only way to do that is to take it apart. So there are four screws on the bottom. Let's undo those and see what happens. I've never looked inside one of these toys before. So um, yeah, it would be quite interesting.
Right, as you can see, I've got this apart and I've been sort of pondering uh, why this isn't working as I think it should do. It may be that uh, these uh, tail fins never clipped down particularly uh, tightly. As this is the first version of the Thunderhawk I've had, I could just be overthinking it. But I can see exactly what's going on. You can just about unclip this toy. There's a clip at the front which is a little bit more awkward, so I've not bothered to unclip that because I don't need to. There's no point in uh, unclipping things just for the sake of it because these toys are old and things may just break. But the way it works is when you push this lever down here it pulls back this little latch uh, there's no spring on that it's just sort of a bendy plastic essentially so when you push on it it, it pulls it backwards uh, but that little latch is then held in place by this bar that pushes down from the top so you've got a bar on the bottom where the latch is sort of sat in place and then uh, this black piece of plastic from the top holds it sort of vertically down so when you push this it just pulls that little latch backwards but there's quite a bit of uh, sort of gap between the uh, a little latch that is pulled backwards and that top bar so uh, there's a, a lot of up and down motion in fact if I get my screwdriver here you'll probably just to be able to see this you can see there's a lot of vertical motion in that bar uh, so that little bar latches onto this back part of the fin so you can see here there's a red uh, sort of uh, bit that sticks out that red piece latches onto the little back piece there and I'm guessing that there's enough vertical motion in this and enough wobble that that allows it to rise up sort of part way so I think what we can do is probably improve this by adding an extra piece of uh, black plastic just onto the bottom of the uh, the bar there that pushes down uh, you can just about the see what I mean this bar here if I add maybe sort of a one and a half millimeter piece of styrene onto the bottom of that that might give it enough sort of force that it holds this latch in place and stops this latch being able to move up and down. It's certainly worth a try, so uh, I'm going to do that and see if that improves things. But it may not make any difference at all, but it's certainly worth a try. So I've been into my uh, spares pot and I found this bit of uh, 1.5 millimeter black styrene. And I'm going to use that to stick in place. Uh, this is the right sort of plastic for plastic weld, so I, I know that this will fuse quite nicely. So I've got my plastic weld here. We'll put some on and we'll get it stuck on and then I'll uh, trim it down. Uh, whether it's going to make a difference, uh, well, time will tell. We will find out, but I certainly think it was not going to make things worse. So there we go. Let me just stick that on there. I can feel that's bonding quite nicely. We'll let that dry. I'll trim it down and then we'll see if the uh, fin works any better. That's all had time to dry and you can see I've trimmed that down. So basically I've added 1.5 uh, millimetres of depth to that uh, little post there. So it just is going to push that little tab down a little bit further. And an interesting thing I've noticed uh, having sort of dealt with this toy and turned it over on the inside, you can just about read here written in, um, it looks like black marker pen. It says 2857. Someone's actually written a number on the inside of that toy. I wonder if that's a sort of manufacturing number. It's written by hand. So um, I found much doubt a child would have done this because no child would have taken this toy apart to write a number on there so I wonder what 2857 means it's obviously meant something when this toy was being made just an interesting thing to note so uh, let's put this all back together you can see I unclipped there are two little clips here so we can clip this back down and that should clip in place like that and now if I push that button, that little uh, lever, it does move in, but it's also held. Yeah, you can see that that is held. It's not going to be able to move up and down as much. I can just get my screwdriver in there. Yeah, that's really held in place quite firmly. So I hope that has made quite a big difference. So let's put the top of the car back on. This is all just a case of lining everything up and making sure things go where they should. There's a spring that needs to go inside the fin there. And then we just have to line the front up and make sure that little button comes through the top there like so that feels good so uh, we'll give this a test if I hold the back of this car together I don't think it's uh, going to unping so let's push that down oh yeah that's much better it still doesn't hide it completely but it certainly hides most of it I think that is a considerable improvement that fin is certainly a lot lower down so uh, yeah that's definitely improved it and if I press this button does it unclip still it does. All right, so yeah, that's a quite a good way of fixing that. I think it's just there's a lot of play in this mechanism. As I say, this is the first time I've worked on this toy, so I don't know what any of the others are like, but it felt like that uh, wasn't clipping down as far as it should do. Now at least you can't see the jets. You can still see the little mask emblem, but most of the jets are hidden. So yeah, adding 1.5 mil of uh, black styrene to that post has really helped. So I'm gonna screw this toy back together and then we can sort out the uh, stickers.
that's now working a lot better if I press this button on the back you can see the wings do flip up we can open up those little sort of jet pieces and that rear fin has shot up and when we uh, lock everything back in place let's just put those doors down those lock in and we can clip that fin down and most of the back is now hidden so I think that works a lot better than it did previously I'm very happy with that but we've got stickers missing so I need to remake these stickers from scratch I found a couple of scans online that are not great quality so I will be redrawing these I'm going to show you a quick edit of uh, what I do to uh, create those stickers but if you want to see the full process with me talking about how I go about it then head on over to Toyploy 2 where I have a special video which is all about recreating the Thunderhawk stickers from scratch so go over there and check that out but in the meantime here's a quick montage of what I did And here we go there's a full set of uh, replacement stickers as I say if you want to see how I actually go about making these stickers then head on over to Toyploy 2 where I have a video and I describe the entire process from start to finish so you can have a go yourself but let's get these stickers onto the Thunderhawk we just need to replace a couple it's mainly the fin and these ones at the top so you've got some little sort of panels here to represent uh, windows and a little sort of technical panel with some uh, I don't know some bits and bobs going on that goes in the middle just to hide those rivet holes and then we have this rear fin so I will re-stick all of those I'm also going to re-stick a couple of these original stickers that are starting to come loose as you can see that one's still all right it's got a little bit of damage to it but I don't want to replace it completely so I will be sticking that back on with a bit of Pritt stick and uh, just using a screwdriver to get some of the glue underneath that and that should stick on quite nicely I think there's a few others that may need a little bit of work but let's get these all stuck on and then it's going to look as good as new
so that makes a big difference putting those stickers on the top really does make it look like a finished toy now as you can see i also put the little uh, indicator lights on as well now if you want this file for yourself then head on over to toyploy.com where you can download it for free i have printed this out onto glossy sticky backed printer paper i think that gives the best result and really does match these original stickers quite nicely there's still a few bits missing from this vehicle though first we need matt tracker and as i showed you at the start my matt tracker had a, a helmet that had been cut down so i've been onto ebay and uh, i've bought myself a new matt tracker which has now turned up this doesn't have the uh, damaged helmet so he can go inside we also need the bombs to go on the underside of this and again that's an ebay purchase there is a seller called uh, yavin 34k and he makes replacement bombs these look like they're 3d prints to me i'm uh, not quite sure they're very tiny and i can see why these get lost but i think these are 3d prints they don't look like um they have been cast at all maybe they have hard, very hard to say but here you can buy a few bombs you can buy them in packs of two or in packs of four i've just bought two of them because that's all i need for this and that these pop into the bottom of here i guess they must sort of clip in somehow just drop them in i can certainly see why these are lost over time because uh, they're quite awkward to get in i guess some um, tiny hands helps and uh, as this is this toy is designed for children then that's probably a good reason so there we go there we go those are fitted in so now when we convert this into the plane mode by pressing the button here get those wings out we can access the button on the back which should release those bombs so if i press those jets in i believe there we go the bombs have now dropped so that is all complete but we need one final thing to uh, make this fully displayable and that is a replacement box to display it next to you now if you watched my uh, restoration of the uh, condor you'll have seen that i bought a replacement box from uh, insta mask and i've gone there again and i've brought the thunderhawk box as well which is uh, looking really nice it makes really nice reproductions and you get a lot with them so here you can see this is the box and it's really nicely sort of built and completed it even comes with a little uh, price sticker here so it's got this sort of uk price on it which would have been 10 99 and it's got all the original details that you would expect on a box like this and then if we open it up you'll see inside this box even comes with the original insert so that you could uh, pack your toy away if you wanted to this is how it would have come originally and we also get a set of uh, sticker sheets so if you don't want to go down the route that i've done and make replacement stickers or print your own then you can get the uh, stickers via this route so these are printed and all die cut you get a set of replacement screws as well because as i showed often screws and things like that get a bit rusty so there's replacement screws to go with it and then you get the uh, sort of catalogue as well so you can see exactly what toys were available when you bought the thunderhawk originally and this is a really nice poster almost worth putting up on the wall i'd say i like things like this it shows you exactly what's going on with everything and if we turn it over you can see we have the instruction sheet of how to use your thunderhawk and also where to put all of the stickers so it's a really nice package you get everything you need to uh, sort of fully display your thunderhawk and make it look as good as it possibly can so i will be putting links to uh, his instagram account and also the uh, ebay shop where he sells all of this so if you want to get one for yourself head on over there and grab one of these so there we go i now have a really nicely finished off thunderhawk that is ready to display but this is not the end of this project as i say i want to come back to this because there's much more that we can do on it this thunderhawk i was a little disappointed because it wasn't as damaged as i'd hoped so i bought myself another one which is about to arrive in the post and as soon as that arrives i will start to get to work on that because there are things i want to cover that i haven't covered here the main ones being the fact the tires are often missing on this vehicle so i'm going to hunt down some tires that we can use as a replacement they're also often missing this piece that pops out here which is supposed to be sort of a jet or something or lasers that comes out of the uh, doorway that is often missing and i'm making my own versions as you can see here this is my prototype version and i will be talking you through the entire process of making that so make sure you are subscribed to this channel to be kept up to date also go and check out some of my other mask restorations i've done quite a few and there will be more coming in future if you've enjoyed this video then make sure to hit the subscribe button and tap the bell to be notified each time i upload a new video and thanks for watching thanks for watching toy ploy subscribe for more great videos you can also follow toy ploy on twitter facebook and instagram